All right, so last night's we homework was using table J to predict which of the following elements replace each other. What this is really about is looking to see if we can predict whether a reaction works or not. Okay, so we can actually predict whether a reaction, whoa, Lincoln, whether a reaction will work or not based on our net potential table. Now, we don't have the potential table, but we learned yesterday that if we get positive volts, that means there's a pathway for electrons to flow. So positive voltage, we learned, was a potential, was a potential difference in charge, from high to low. Therefore, electrons could flow. Negative volts means there's not a pathway. It's kind of a positive voltage is like waterfalls flowing downhill. Water has a place to go of lower potential energy, so it goes from high potential energy to low. Whereas a waterfall that has a lower height okay, would not have the same amount of voltage because there isn't a great difference in potential energy. And if the waterfall was even with, it wouldn't be a waterfall, would it? It'd just be a river, okay? It wouldn't flow down, okay? So negative voltage would mean water flow is trying to go upward. And that's not a positive, that's not a pathway that actually happens. We call that pathway non-spontaneous. A reaction does not occur. If I'm trying to go from low charge to high charge, it doesn't go that way. And we say something is non-spontaneous, okay? And therefore negative voltages. But we don't need voltages. All we need is table J, okay? So when I ask number one, which of the following will replace tin and tin chloride? I look at table J and say tin is better than oxidizing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, titanium is TI. Titanium is better than oxidizing than tin. So therefore, on table J, tin, titanium, sorry, is higher than tin. Titanium is TI, tin is SN. So what I say, well, which of the following will replace tin and tin chloride? I'm trying to make the tin in tin chloride, who is plus two, become zero. The only way that happens is he gets reduced. So he has to be the element that's lower than the one who's oxidized. So you go to table J, and you see the only one there who is higher than tin is titanium. Okay, so that's how you work that. Number two, which metal can reduce strontium plus two? Well, if, we're, if, if strontium plus two is getting reduced, I go to table J, and I look for an element who's higher, who's better at oxidizing. The one who oxidizes is listed higher. Okay, this blinking is getting, getting to me. Okay, so that's how we use it. Now, I want all my future APers out there to know that it's not so simple. We actually um, <coughs> use what? We actually use net potentials to get that. All right, so where table J comes from is those net potentials. Okay, number three, real quick. Which metal will spontan or react spontaneously? Spontaneously means we'll give you positive voltages. We'll have a pathway, we'll work. Well, silver can only do what? What can only a standalone metal do? Lose electrons are called what? Oxidize, right, Leo the line, losing electrons. That means silver has to be the one that's high higher on table J, that activity metals, because it's better at oxidizing, and gold is below reducing, yes? Okay. Which chemical will spontaneously oxidize sodium to sodium plus one? Well, if sodium is oxidizing on table J, it's going to be above the element that has to reduce. And the only choice there that's below sodium is the silver, and that's why that works. It's that simple. Okay? That simple. Now, let's, let me go somewhere else for a second to do this demo, all right? I want to go to table, not table J. Let's go, to, let's go to the net potential table first. Maybe. That's not it. That's uh, acrobat. Let's go to the potential table. Do I have it open? Probably not. So if I go to the potential table, which you guys should still have out, okay? If I go there... Uh, table J. Okay, here we go. This is where table J is based upon, as we talked about yesterday. My turn, my time, guys. Now, let me do a demonstration. I want you to look very carefully, okay? In fact, we're going to go with a couple elements here. I'm going to look at aluminum. 
Where is aluminum on this chart? Aluminum, or as we say in England, aluminium. Okay, kind of fun. Maybe not. But there's aluminium right here. Aluminum. Is aluminum pretty reactive metal? Where is aluminum? Well, let's look at this chart again. Aluminum ions gaining three electrons are what kind of voltage? What does that mean? Negative volts mean? Is this spontaneous or not? Does aluminum plus three like to gain electrons? No. Negative volts mean that you don't have a pathway. You have to add that energy to make it happen. So that means that the reverse, aluminum loves to do what? Lose electrons are called oxidized. It's positive 0.166 in the reverse. So my friends in chemistry, aluminum is better than oxidizing than zinc, because zinc is positive 0.76. Aluminum is better than who? Iron, positive 0.4, better than nickel, tin. Okay, aluminum is higher than zinc and iron. Who's better than aluminum? Sodium. Where do we get that list? My friends in chemistry, go to your reference table. What do we got? We have, where's my aluminum? Oh, who's better than aluminum? Sodium. Who's worse? Zinc. It's the same list. That's where it comes from. Okay? Now, looking at table J, let's stay with table J right now. Let's go find where tin is. Tin is SN. Where is tin? Let's make this bigger for everyone to see. Let's move this over, because that's rude. Up close and personal. Where is tin? SN. Toward the bottom, right? We talked about yesterday, why is gold at the bottom? Gold is the worst at doing what? Acting like a metal. Rusting, which means losing electrons. That's why gold is something that people want because it never rusts and it's shiny and it's golden. Now, silver's better. Copper's also something that resists oxidation. Why? Why are pipes made of copper? And we can't afford silver or golden pipes downstairs, so they're not as good as these guys. But copper is right there. Copper is not good at oxidizing. If it was, all your water pipes in your basements or whatever you have water running through your walls would eventually rust, blow hole, basically all of a sudden, there goes another one. So copper is used, and it's expensive for that reason, because it doesn't oxidize as well. Does it oxidize? Yes, but not as well as these two. Yes? I was going to say it does burn. Oh, absolutely it does, but much, much slower than the ones above it, especially iron. Yes? What's the Statue of Liberty made of? Made of copper, and when it does oxidize, it gives you that green patina, that green rust. In fact, steeples on St. Isidore's. If you ever go to the Polish Town Fair, yeah. they're green. They're not painted green. They're made of copper. They, they made them out of copper so they stay green. So it, yes, it does rust. And yes, even these guys both rust. But they don't rust with greater as much quantity as the ones above. Rusting means you lose electrons. It's oxidation. Okay? Any case, tin is toward the bottom of this pile, isn't it? Okay, so tin is toward the bottom. Now, where's aluminum? Let's scroll down. Where's aluminum? All the way up here. Everyone can see that aluminum is much more reactive than tin. Yes? Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Think about this. I've got aluminum. Zero. Okay, now, we make aluminum cans. Where's my can? Here we go. Now, of course, this is Coca-Cola, and I don't mean to give it any more free uh, uh, advertising, but the bottom line is this is made of aluminum. Now, the problem is aluminum is pretty reactive, but we use aluminum because it's very cheap. There's so much of it. Now, the problem is that most foods are slightly acidic, which means what? We now know what acidity means. So aluminum, in the presence of H pluses, do what? Well, what's going to happen? Aluminum, standalone metal, can only do what? Lose electrons. So it loses electrons to the H plus. So aluminum becomes aluminum plus three. Hydrogen becomes, as it gains electron, becomes H zero. Now because it's diatomic, it becomes H two. And we need two of these. Now it's not balanced, and we'll get to that. But 
you should know that what phase is a metal that's a zero? Is it a solid, liquid, or gas? Anytime you got a metal has no charge, what is its phase? Solid. When it's aqueous, what phase do you think it exists in most of the time? Aqueous. Okay, it, it, it can exist as a solid, as yes it does, but in water it's aqueous. So, if I put food in an aluminum container, that's always going to be slightly acidic. Now, coal, coal actually has acids in it, so uh, phosphoric acid, and phosphoric acid is uh, something they put in here to keep it fresh. But the point I want to make here is that most foods are slightly acidic. So when you put <coughs> juices or any kind of food in an aluminum can, it's going to eat away the can. What's your question? What it, where would stainless steel that's, be? That's a good question. Now, stainless steel, see how bad iron is? Yeah. Okay? So iron's not very good. So what they do is they add chromium to it. Now, chromium, so it's only a little bit better. That's true. But what chromium does, it's a great question. Chromium, so you have iron. Here's your question. So uh, here's your iron outside. As you know, iron likes to oxidize. It's going to turn into rust exposed to oxygen. You guys have seen that reddish brown rust. Now, stainless steel has chromium metal linked in the crystals of the metal. They form an oxide level with oxygen. This oxide layer, so they rust. But when they rust, you don't, it's white or it's see-through. It's very colorless, so you don't notice it. But it forms an oxide layer that protects. So stainless steel protects by making an oxide layer that doesn't go any further. Okay, But, but adding other elements to other elements can change their properties called alloys. And yes, adding chromium to the iron will prevent it from rusting as much. It still can rust, though. The idea that it can't rust. Everything can rust if you just change the conditions. But the point I'm trying to make, here's aluminum. Here's tin. This can, if it was pure aluminum, if you had Coca-Cola in it, would be bleeding out Coca-Cola in a week, less than a week. You know what they line the Coca-Cola cans or any aluminum can that has something acidic, which is almost everything? They line it with tin, a little bit of tin. And I'm going to show you. So here I have some some uh, Coca-Cola can, <laughs> easy for me to say. What I'm going to do is take this triangle file, and I'm just going to scratch it uh, a circle, OK? Now, when I'm scratching the circle, what I'm doing is I'm scratching the tin layer. Why do you think they line the inside with tin? How good an oxidation is tin? It's, is it better or worse than aluminum? It's, 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 it, yeah, it doesn't oxidize very well. It resists doing this. So, but tin is pretty expensive, so they don't make tin cans anymore. That's why you don't have tin foil anymore. It's aluminum foil. But what they do is they put a little bit of a lining. Having a lining of tin in here protects the aluminum. So part of the reason why aluminum cans recycling costs money is that you've got some tin you have to separate. Besides washing the outside. So here I go. All I'm going to do is scratch the outside. I'm making just a scratch in a circle. Now, by, by doing that, all I'm doing is exposing the what? The aluminum. Right. Okay, I just made a circle. The can is still intact. Okay? Now, I'm going to put this can in here. All right? And I'm going to pour... An oxidizing agent. What does an oxidizing agent do? Okay. It's going to help the aluminum oxidize. So itself is going to reduce, right, if you said that. So I'm going to fill the can up. Now I'm filling it with copper plus two ions. Where is copper in relation to aluminum? <coughs> Therefore, oops, I'm, if it's worse at oxidizing, therefore it's better at, right, okay. So let me just fill this can up. I'm filling it up with copper ions all the way to the top. Now, what I'm going to show you, party people, is that I scraped off the tin, a thin layer of tin. It's not much, but a thin layer. Okay, and what's going to happen is hopefully... Those copper plus two ions do what? So let's just change this. 
What's going? This, what's this going to be? This is going to be copper plus two. This is going to make pure what? Yes, pure copper is going to be made. Okay, it's copper zero. It's okay. All right. Now, standalone elements, what? Getting oxidized, copper oxide is going to reduce. So copper, if aluminum is a higher than copper, where's copper? Below, right? Then it's going to be a spontaneous process. So copper is going to pull, plus two is going to pull the electrons away. Give me a couple of minutes as we go through the rest of the, this, and you can see it's going to work. Okay. So that's going to give, let that go a couple of minutes, and in a few minutes, the aluminum that's scratched and now exposed will be pulled into aluminum plus three ions. Okay, now, while I'm talking to you, I want to go over the skill I'm working on today. Table J helps us predict. So this is going to work, correct? Will the copper plus two oxidize the aluminum? Yes. Yes, because why? Because the aluminum is better at oxidizing. Than the copper. And that it came from the voltages. It gives me what kind of voltage? Positive. positive volts. If we do the volts, it's positive, which means it's spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Spontaneous. Very good. Now, this is, a, this is a skill I'm teaching today. Okay, I want to balance this net iron reaction. This is called a net iron reaction because I'm not adding copper chloride. So let's see what I do here. Very simple. Okay, and then we're going to talk about lab, and then we're going to be off and running. Okay, I'll give you a couple examples. So here's the half reaction right here. Uh, copper, aluminum plus three. Is this balanced? Is this balanced? Don't I have the same number of aluminums and coppers on both sides? Isn't the law of conservation of mass being upheld here? Right. The mass is balanced, but the charge isn't. Redox reactions, as all reactions, you must balance the mass and balance the charge. So don't fall for saying, oh, this is balanced. In other reactions, we didn't talk about it, but every single reaction, I'll say it again, Mary Kate, I'll say it again, Sarah, every single reaction, we're balancing the mass and charge. Now, sometimes the charge doesn't change, so you don't think about it, but we always have the same charge at both sides. Now, here's how we do it. We can do it in terms of um, half reactions. I'll show you another way. So let's do it in terms of half reactions first. Can everyone see this with the background the way it is? We're good? Okay. So I want to keep watching if something happens. Okay. So the first step, separate these two half reactions. So aluminum zero goes to aluminum plus three. How, how many electrons are involved in this process? Three. Where do they go? The reactant? Okay. If I put it on the reactant side... Our check is that both sides of a half reaction have the same charge. This is negative 3 now. This side is plus 3. Is that right? No. So we have to put on the side that both sides have the same charge because charge is conserved. So, so it has to go on this side. Plus 3 electrons. Okay. Both sides have the same charge. Now, cover plus 2. What does it do? It becomes... Copper, zero. zero. So react in how many? Two. two. Why'd you pick two? So that both sides have the same, same charge. Does it have to be zero, just the same charge? Now here's the problem. Does anyone see a problem with this? You guys told me charge wasn't conserved. Kara was right. This side is what charge collectively? Plus two. This side is plus... That can't work because according to my half reactions... I'm absorbing two electrons. This guy is producing three. We're losing an electron. You can't do that. You can't create electrons and destroy them. So we have to make sure that the electrons are the same. So like when you balance coefficients, how do we get the same number of electrons on both sides? What's a common factor between two and three? Six. So what do I multiply all the way through to get six electrons? Two. We distribute. Two here. Two here. Hello. Six. How do I get six here? Multiply everything by? Three. By three. Three times two is six. Three and three. Party people, we can see that the six electrons now cancel. 
And if I balance my electrons, I automatically balance my reaction. Now, does this work? We can check. What's 2 times 0? What's 3 times 2? The side is plus 6. What's 3 times 0? What's 2 times 3? And look, 2 aluminums, 2 aluminums, 3 coppers, 3 coppers. That's how you balance. You can do half reactions, or I'm going to show you another way. Watch. Let's do the same thing now. We're going to eventually, we're doing the same thing, it's just that we, we, I'll give you the opportunity, probably people like cringing that I'm going to show you this, the purest out there, but listen, watch. I want plus 6 on both sides. This side is plus 2, this side is plus 3. How do I get plus 6? Put a what in front of this? 3 times what is plus 6? Anyone see something happening? Something is leaking. Why am I leaking copper plus 2? I, I must have perforated it. The copper plus 2 must be creating a hole because once aluminum gets oxidized, it becomes aqueous. So our can is being eaten away by copper ions. Our can, is being, which, which we took the what? The aluminum away is being eaten away. Now, watch how I balance this. I just did it with what? Half reactions? Now I'm going to do it with discharges. Total charge on this side is plus 2, just like Kara said, plus 3. So what I want to do here is make this side plus 6. So I multiply the copper plate what? What number plus 2 is, what number times plus 2 is plus 6? Okay, that gives me plus 6. Now wait a minute, I have 3 coppers. i got to balance my mass too, so how many coppers? But does that change my charge? No, because it's 0. Okay, this side is plus 3. How do I get plus 6 on this side? Two. Put a 2. 2 times 3 is plus 6. Good. And I, wait a minute, I have 2 aluminums. I need what? Two. 2 over there. And now I balance the same way. So you have the ability to go both either using half reactions or this way. But my friends in chemistry, understand both ways. What you're really doing is balancing the what? <coughs> the electrons. All right? All right, let me give you another one. Let's do one on the periodic table, or at least on one on the one we did here. So let's do one together, or at least try one. So, this is a, so we just did number four together. So let's try number five. These are called net ion equations. Now, if you're not really sure, write a half reaction. Write, write, write a half reaction. Everything begins with assigning oxidation numbers. Standalone metal is a zero. Zero. Is this a redox reaction? Is this a redox reaction? What do I see? Zero. And I see what? Numbers changing. Plus one's going to zero. Yeah. So. If you have to write a half reaction, be my host and do that. Mg0 goes to Mg plus 2. My friends in chemistry, how many electrons are involved? Two. Where do they go? They go on the side so that both sides of the half reaction have the same, like we're from New England, charge. So where do we go? Reactant side? Okay, so reactant side. Negative 2 plus uh, 0 gives me negative 2 on this side plus 2. Uh-uh, charge is not conserved. You silly rabbits. Plus 2E. Now I'm balanced. Cool beans. 2H pluses. Make what? H20. I mean, this side is what charge? Or as we say in New England, charge. Plus 2. So uh, this side is what charge? So how many electrons and where do they go? Right. And, and you know, guys, if you are producing an electron on one side, you have to absorb another one. Now, my friends in chemistry, wait a minute. I'm releasing two electrons and absorbing electrons. Is this balanced already? 
This side is plus 2. This side is plus 2. We're balanced. Sorry for all the work, but I want to show you when you are balanced, the electrons are balanced. You're absorbing the same amount that you lose. Okay, on your own, right now do the next one, number 6. I don't care which method you use. How's our can doing? Is it still still leaking? If you're not sure, right half reaction. Key is balancing mass and the charge. You don't see it, you got to write the half reaction. Balance the electrons, you automatically balance. Anybody get this without doing half reactions? This one might be a little bit challenging. Kind of? But if you can't, if you can't do it, okay, to see what combination, because it was two things to change, you can see that you can do it with half reactions. But I had to balance. Notice it was a three and two. So I had to do what? Multiply one side by three, you get the six electrons. <laughs> Multiply the other side by two. Okay, and then, is this right? How do I know it's right? Because I did it? No, I'm full of errors. Sometimes getting up is an error. What am I making sure this is right? They're equal, right. Three times zero, zero. Two times plus six, plus 12 on this side. Okay, two times three is plus six, plus three times two is six. 6 plus 6, 12 and 12. Okay? So this is a skill we have to have. Real quickly, 7. Is this balanced already or not? How do I know? What's the total charge on this side? It's total charge on this side. So therefore, it's already balanced. You have one silver, one silver, one iron, one iron, same charge. This is balanced. This side must be what? You know, there's a, there's a passing around of three electrons. So any case, not a hard skill. OK, let's go look at our can here. All right? <coughs> Clearly, our can is having some issues because you see some liquid being dropped. So. Um, See if I can gently, gently take this out. Now, if you look carefully, 
okay? And I'm going to show you. Um, can, can we see it? I'm going to look, look this up. Can you see what the hard compounds are on the bottom of this? What do you think that is? That's copper. Did we do a reaction where we collected copper? Yeah. Yeah, what did we use? What did we drop in the copper chloride? Oh, the same reaction. This is exactly the same reaction that you had with what? In lab. We took aluminum foil. We dropped it in a what? We dropped it in copper chloride. We heated it to make it go faster. We increased the rate of reaction. And we did what with this copper? We filtered it, right? It's the same reaction. So this is working because I took the tin away. Okay, so let's just dump this. Okay, so what I have here is a can that looks pretty intact. But if you look very carefully, there's a little ripple here. Okay, let me see if I can show you. This ripple is where I scratched away the what? The tin, correct? Can we see that? I don't know if you can see that at all. I see There's a little ripple right here. If I did this right, the only thing holding this can together is the paint. I exposed the aluminum. The aluminum gave its electrons to the copper plus two. The copper plus two became solid. So all I should be able to do here is, is rip it off. Okay, now I'm not that strong. Okay? All that happened was that I made the, I made the aluminum very, very thin by exposing the tin. Take a break, please.